Hello, this is Rebecca Fleetwood Hessian, host of the Badass Women's Council podcast, and I'm glad you're here. Today's show, we have Nina Klim, and you may not know Nina's name just yet, but you're about to. Her show, Flipping Exes, is coming out on Bravo TV on August the 6th, and it is a show where Nina and her ex-boyfriend, Michael, flip houses together and all the chaos that ensues from that. And you're just going to fall in love with Nina today. She tells her story, as we typically do here on the Badass Women's Council. We're all about reflection and connection. And Nina gets really, really authentic and shares how she grew up and made her way to where she is. And it's not a story that you would even guess. So Nina grew up in an area called Lowell, which is right outside of Boston. And actually in the mid nineties was showcased on an HBO documentary called uh, High on Crack Street. So it was a rough area that Nina grew up in. And not only did she grow up in a rough area, but was later diagnosed with dyslexia. School was not an easy path for her, but she had a real ambition and a passion for fashion. And at 17 years old, she ventured out and went to work and has just had an amazing journey, what I refer to often as a breadcrumb trail of discovery, where she's taken many of her unique gifts and talents and now is going to be on Bravo TV as a result. So we're so excited to have Nina. Here we go. Hey, Nina, how's it going? It's going amazing. How are you? I'm super good. I am so excited to talk to you. And well, I'm excited to talk to you too. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly why I'm excited to talk to you because your energy is so contagious. So I believe it's important that we share how we met. Mm-hmm. This is our how we met story. And I met you on Instagram. Yep. Yep. I just You just slid into my DM. I did, girl. <laughs> and it, it, it's just one of those things where it's like, she's fabulous. You kept showing up on my in in my on the gram. And I was like, she's here in, in my hood. Like we live in the same area around we do. Indianapolis. Well, right Indiana. Around the from each other. Didn't yeah. even know it. Didn't even know it. Yep. And I did slide into your DMs. I'm yep. like, hey girl, I think you'd be good on the podcast. Do you want to come hang out? And 10 minutes into our coffee meeting, mm-hmm. we're laughing, we're yep. crying, we're telling, yep. yes. like, we know everything about each other. Yes. Like, it was beautiful. Instant. It was instant. Instant yeah. connection. Yeah. But I think that's an important message in what we're all about here at the Badass Women's Council is reflection and connection that we have to open ourselves up to that ability to do that. Yes. Right? Yes, absolutely we do. But I feel what I connected with you as soon as, soon as I went down the rabbit hole and, <laughs> and looked at the pictures, I thought, wow, what an incredible w- woman that wants to highlight other women. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that unfortunately a lot of women don't, um, don't help support other women mm-hmm. and tear them down. And, and I, I'm not that person. And so I initially saw your page and I was like, man, that is, that's a woman I want to connect with. Like <sighs> she's a strong woman. Oh, I love that. I read through all of my journals one time, sat down and read years worth of journals. And every so often there was something that said, I just want to tell people's stories. Mm. And that lights me up. When yeah. I hear your story, it inspires me and I know it can inspire others. And that's my jam. Yeah. I love it. That's amazing. And your story is a really inspiring one in that when you look at your page and you look at the things that you put out there, you're doing some amazing things. In fact, we're going to talk about this later, but I just want to highlight you have a show on Bravo TV that's coming out in a couple of weeks. I do. Oh my God. I'm freaking out. Is that not crazy? <laughs> it's, 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 it's it's crazy. It's I could never even fathom that this would happen to me, and it did. It's crazy. So I, I lead with that because I want to now say, let's talk about where your story started, knowing now that it's now <laughs> launching on Bravo TV. <laughs> but you, where did you grow up? So you're not from the Indianapolis I not, area. I'm not. I'm not from Indiana um, or Carmel. I, I grew up just north of Boston in a city called Lowell. 
And big city, um, I will say that it, it wasn't, it's not the greatest place, mm-hmm. you know, to, to, it, it's a little rough around the edges okay. and, um, and it was, it, there was some challenges growing up. Do you mind sharing? No, of course not. <laughs> I don't like sharing at all. <laughs> I knew the answer, but I was trying to be polite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? Um, where I grew up, where I grew up, it, it was, um, it's kind of funny. Actually, HBO did a special on it. I kid you not. True story. You can't, I can't even make this up. They did a special on it. I think it was in the 90s, and it was called Crack on High Street. And I literally grew up right around the corner from where they filmed wow. that HBO special, just to wow. give you like a little insight. There's some it. context for you. Yeah. yeah. And, and it was interesting because... I, I grew up in a, my dad is first generation here from Greece, okay, mm-hmm. and um, very humble man, you know, and and I think him and my mom probably raised me and my brother on, I don't know, maybe $10,000 a year, like, so we didn't grow up with money, and but I always had ambition in me, mm-hmm. and I, my... I guess you could say my passion for fashion was <laughs> was, was kind of what got me through my my grade school and my junior high because I wasn't like everybody else. Um, I, I wasn't book smart at all. I actually have dyslexia, and I hid it for a lot of. Well, I didn't hide it. I actually, nobody knew about it. Yeah, they, back then it was it, nobody talked about exactly. that. Right? Nobody talked about it. Nobody really, I guess, knew how to how to um, see the signs of it. And they didn't even find out that I had dyslexia until I was a junior in high school. Mm-hmm. And it was actually the substitute teacher who held me after class and told me, um, has anybody talked to you? Do you know that you have dyslexia? And I was like, what's that? Like, I I had no idea what it was. And so for, you know, growing up, I just thought I was stupid. I just thought that I wasn't smart and, and what have you. So instead of me getting clicks and hanging out in, in, you know, girl clicks and what have you, I kind of just was more to myself. And, and I really got into loving fashion first, like book I fell in love with was a book on Chanel's life. And, and I, I just started taking, stealing my mom's clothes and like <laughs> doing stuff with them. And that was kind of my escape. And I think my story really began when I met a woman and um, her name is Darlene Webb. And she was, she connected with me. She, I, I sent her a picture because I wanted to be on the runway. Like I wanted to be yes. on the runway. I yes. wanted to, I loved fashion. And it was the time where, you know, Christy Turlington and Cindy Crawford were like, you know, the main women in fashion. And I just, I wanted to be a part of that. And so I just, I reached out to Darlene. She owned a, um, a modeling agency and I sent her a picture and she called me and it was a really small agency. And I will tell you, I met Darlene, I think when I was 12 years old and I started working, like I started working and hustling and wanting that, that to go to the mall and be able to buy what I wanted Mm -hmm. to buy. And so I've started working at a new age. She taught me how to walk in heels. She taught me how to do my makeup. Like (laughs) people wonder why I walk in all my heels now. Well, let me tell you something. I had a good teacher on that. We may have to do some lessons. Actually, I'm 53. I could probably use some lessons, even even how to walk on my heels. And what a beautiful story of, like you said, women supporting yeah. women, and and you being courageous enough at that age to reach out and and do those things. That's a beautiful thing. You know what? A lot of where I grew up, a lot of people would you know head to the park and do drugs and drink and you know get into trouble and and. I just was not that person. You know, I wanted something different. I wanted to I wanted to accomplish something. I always wanted to own a business. It was just mm-hmm. it was like bread in me. You and had that fire early on. I did. On. I had yeah. a fire early on and my my dad used to always tell me, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated. Work hard. You'll get to where you want to be. Don't don't stab people in the back. Be honest. Like that that's how I grew up. And I feel like between my dad and you know, laying the foundation for me and then Darlene, it really when I got to high school, I still didn't have a lot of confidence because I I 
didn't, I, I just felt like I was so beneath everybody mm. else. And then it was just kind of learning how to grow out of my shell. And I left the house when I was 17. And I was like, I'm moving, I'm moving literally to downtown Boston and I'm going to, I'm going to start and something. do my thing. Yeah. I want to touch on this aspect of dyslexia. I have done a lot of study and work with parents and kids uh, with attention deficit disorder. Oh yeah, I have that too. And I, yeah, I'm like dyslexic, ADHD, you know, anxiety. That's me. Like I'm just like a walking disaster. Well, well that, but it's, here's the thing. It's, it's not a disaster. The society has told us that exactly. it's, that it's difficult because education is this factory model of everybody's supposed to do it the same. Yep. And in, you having these challenges have really, this is what makes you unique. This is what stimulated a lot of your creativity. This is what has made you who you are. And I want any listeners out there who have had some of these same challenges to recognize that we don't want to hide these things. Yes. Like this is an opportunity to say, this just makes me not wrong, just different. Yes. And how can I use those differences to leverage as strengths, exactly. not hide from them, which is exactly what you've done. Yep. Yeah. I, I 100% agree with that. I feel like unfortunately society really plays a part, especially in young girls' lives. And for me, if I could, if I can help girls in a situation where I came from or, or help them discover that they don't need to look at Instagram pictures and want to be that person mm. that has, that's fake from head to Preach, toe. Preach, girl. Like they don't have to do that. They can find a strength within themselves and grow it and be confident in it. And and I think that like sometimes for, for me, it's people don't know how to really talk to women, mm -hmm. you know, and it's more of, oh, well, so-and-so does this. So-and-so, you should do this because this is the path that I think you should take, or this is how so-and-so became, you know, successful. No, everybody has their own path. Yes. You just got to tap into what your passion is. When you find your passion, then I feel like you found your path. And you don't find it at always a young age. It's okay to just let life play out oh, and discover. Yes. So so when you were moving out at 17, you didn't all of a sudden go, yes, and someday I'm going to have a show on Bravo TV and I'm going to be a really successful realtor in Indianapolis. Like you had to discover oh. each of your gifts and talents yes. along the way, yes. right? And sometimes it's interesting because you, and I, I can just speak for kind of what I went through. I had no doubt in my mind that I was going to be in the fashion industry. Like mm -hmm. I, I ended up being a stylist for a while and I I thought that that was my end all be all. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it didn't happen the way that I wanted it to happen. It totally played out 100% different differently than what my I was thinking my life was going to play right. out. But that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of actually not holding back and being open to take chances. Because if you don't take a chance, then you'll never know what you can do. And not seeing that as a failure. Yes. Seeing that as, well, I guess we're on to something else now. What's one this door closes. exploration that we're going on? Yep. Yep. When one door closes, another one's going to open. And that's... I have said this a couple of times recently that the biggest gift that my parents gave to me is they didn't strap me with expectations of what I should and could be. They let me discover it on my own. Yep. They let me make mistakes. Yep. They let me do crazy things. They let me discover me mm -hmm. instead of saying, here's who I think you should be. And yeah. I, w I get really concerned that today parents are afraid to let their kids discover who they're supposed to be. Yeah. That there's supposed to be this expectation that, oh, at 17 years old, I know exactly what I should do and what college I should go to. And like, no, yeah. no, that's not the way it should be. Yeah. Like, just let this path unfold. I, I agree with you 100%. So you move out at 17 mm -hmm. and you're you're determined. Yep. What was that first? The first step was I was running a, um, this is actually a very like funny, interesting story because I moved out at 17 and I actually met a guy, I met a guy. He was most that, crazy story. Start I, yeah, with I met I know, a guy. Right? But however, this is not the guy's story you would think. Okay? okay. Okay. I was working in this this retail store, and um, 
the the first round draft pick for the Boston Celtics came in and he would come in like every Thursday and I just connected with him. And, um, and do he, we want to say his name? You know what? I'm going to say his name because because we used don't to, have to. I, no, no, no. I'm actually <laughs> going to because I'm going to tag him on this and he's going to laugh. So <laughs> so his name's D Brown. He, play, he played for the, the Boston Celtics and he used to come in and and his girlfriend at the time, her name is, is Tammy Brown and um, well, Brown now. And he was like, man, I have to introduce you to my girlfriend. You guys would just like get along so good. And we ended up, I met Tammy to this day. She is my sister. She is my Aww. best friend. But my story kind of starts, well, it started with Darlene, but then it kind of went on to Tammy and Dee. They have been probably um, outside of Darlene, the biggest role models of my life. And he was actually the person to tell me to step out of my comfort zone. And he knew I had a skill with talking to people and colors and, and dressing and wardrobing people. And he called me one day and I'll never forget it. I was driving downtown. I was on Boylston Street in Boston. And and he called me and he's like, listen, I have this great idea I think that you should do. And I was like nervous because Dean never calls me. Like usually I always just talk to Tammy, even though I met him first, like Tammy was my BFF, like that's my sister. Right. So the fact that he called me, I was like, what, what? So I pulled over and he was like, I think that you should quit your job and I think you should become a stylist. Mm -hmm. And so he gave me a door that I walked through and I opened. And quite frankly, if it wasn't for Tammy and Dee, I would have never walked into the role that brought me here today. So <sighs> I give them, and not to mention they are the most incredible people. Talk about an amazing woman. Oh my God, she is. She has been my role model just as a human being, raising her kids, being married to a professional athlete. They've been married for over 25 years. Like her story, you need to have her on your okay, show. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get her on next. But you know what, let's pause on that because this is a critical piece of, of everything that, that I, I want to be about. Our gifts and talents oftentimes get discovered for ourselves by someone else saying, when you do that, when you bring that, when you say this, we don't always recognize them in ourselves because they're so inherent that we take them for granted. Yeah. We don't even think they're special. We don't. Until somebody else says, girl, that's special and you should do that. Then all of a sudden we're like, really? Okay. So we have to be able to reflect and connect to be able to discover the best of who we are. Yeah. It was him saying, girl, you should do this yeah. that lit you up. Oh, Absolutely. Love it. And and that's that's I feel like in life sometimes most people are afraid to really talk up and and be honest with people and, and upfront and I think that you you really when you meet a person and you have a person in your life that can give you that encouragement that you need and belief when you don't believe in yourself oh, but they yeah. believe in you that is speaks volumes. You know, you, you think about just in your life, I'm sure that, that you had somebody that, that really encouraged you yeah. to be the woman that you are, like believed in you. A lot of people don't, a lot of women don't have somebody that really truly believes in them because sometimes they're put in a situation that the people around them, they don't want them to be successful. They want to keep them down. They don't, yeah. and it's unfortunate that a lot more people don't support, like a lot more women don't support other women. Like, let me help you be the best woman that you can be. Because then in return, you're going to help other people. And then we might have a better society with nicer women around. Like. Yeah, because well, <laughs> yeah, the ripple effect of that Absolutely. is huge. Absolutely. And when I think about what that takes, it takes being vulnerable. It takes yes. being open to it. And some people are, I always say that when you, when you come across that woman that's not willing to connect in that way, it's oftentimes because she has such hurt in her own life that she's trying to protect herself. And so it's easier just to bring everything down a few notches than to open them themselves up. So I can have empathy for it, but I agree when we open ourselves up and we allow ourselves to be vulnerable, what happens in that connection is magical. It, man, I, What's it's crazy that you're having this conversation with me right now because I just had this conversation last night with a very, very dear friend of mine, and we were talking about being vulnerable in relationships and how if you are not vulnerable in a relationship, you don't have have a 
an authentic relationship. Yeah, right. You don't because there's barriers built up. Right. So you really never know who that other person is. And you, you know, you talked about like ha- a woman having hurt. Mm-hmm. I I think that I, I recently just had a an amazing God breakthrough moment. Like I mean, just a couple weeks ago, and it came from truly understanding that I had unforgiveness in my heart. Oh. And thinking that, oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah, I forgive that person. Yeah, I forgive that. I'm a happy-go-lucky, energizer, buddy type of person. But deep in my soul, I did not have forgiveness. Oh, wow. So once somebody pointed that out to me, that, that like, I mean, touched a chord because I didn't even know it was there. Mm-hmm. That's how deep it was. Again, it took somebody else exactly and coming you know in and saying, Nina... And it was another woman. Mm -hmm. It was another strong, godly, amazing woman that said, listen, we need to talk. Mm -hmm. And and that unforgiveness, and and I think that a lot of people, a lot of women, you know, let's be real. People break, hurt people hurt people. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's what it is. And let's just pause and say that again. Hurt people hurt other people. Yep. They're doing the best they can. And, and it, oftentimes it's not even malicious. It's their protection of themselves. Exactly. It's the armor they, they put up. Yep. And it's unfortunate, but it's a thing. It is. And yep. unfortunately, what they need to put on is the armor of God. Because at the end of the day, th- that is our strength, mm-hmm. you know? And and I, that's just my belief anyway. And, and I think that w- what it comes to pe- with hurt people, if they really look in their heart and say, you know what, I truly need to forgive this person or I need to let go of the past because a lot of people like, especially like, and man, I had a crazy story with with a friend of mine that told me about this woman that literally kind of lost her mind. And it was it was because she can't let go of the past. Mm. It was like she was holding on to something that wasn't there anymore because she was walking in unforgiveness. And she'll walk in unforgiveness until she forgives. And what happens is when you forgive, when you truly forgive all the words spoken over you, all the people that didn't believe in you, all the, all the hurts that you went through, that's where the freedom comes. Oh, I was going to say, that's where you free it all up. Exactly. Yeah. That's where yeah. you free it all up so you can be you. Yep. You can let go of the past. You want to be crazy? Go, well, not literally crazy, <laughs> but I just mean like, I got a little crazy in me, but I mean like like just crazy and joy, you oh, know, yeah. and being yourself and being okay to be goofy, being okay to be strong, being okay to be, you know, beautiful. Like you. it's it, Be you. you. Yeah. That's all... People, I I think women, like if anybody's like the women that are listening to this, it's don't look at yourself in the mirror and look at your flaws. Like look at your flaws as they're unique. That's why God means me this way. I'm unique. I'm not like everybody else. You don't want to be like everybody else. (laughs) Who who the hell wants to be like somebody else? (laughs) Because then we don't need two of you. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, well, God, listen, I would feel so bad for this world if there was two Nina Clums. <laughs> okay, but the but, world is not ready for yeah, two Nina Clums. Totally not two, but <laughs> but you're right. Yeah. Like it, it's a shame because you know, even as a mom, I try not to point out, like, or or you know, with my boys, like you're perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, God made you perfect. Like it, it's, we should be encouraging the youth not to want to be like the people on TV. Be you, whoever you are, discover it and be you. And you know, I think one of the, I don't think this, I believe it with every ounce of my being, what makes that really difficult is school and education puts them into this situation Mm. where they compare and they are in this environment where uniqueness is not celebrated. It is, there's a certain, you know, here's the grade you need to get. Here's this, you need to, you, it's, it's this factory model of assembly line where you, you have to fit in with everyone else because school puts that on them at oftentimes. Which is terrible. And, And I'll tell you what you, are bringing up a point that um, I had a girlfriend that that 16 year old daughter committed suicide oh, and it was because of being bullied at school. And I, if there's like girls listening or, or women that have teenage daughters, what I really feel like the conversation needs to be is that bully is bullying you because there's something about you 
that they're envious or they're jealous about. Mm -hmm. Because you wouldn't waste your time talking about somebody if they didn't have something that you wanted or that you liked or that that you wanted to be. And, and then you tie it back to what we said earlier is there's some hurt in that yep. person that's bullying that they're trying to make themselves feel better by releasing some of that hurt yes. and anger out to someone else and the consequences are horrific. Hor- horrible. Yeah. Absolutely right. horrible. Right. And and that's like one thing that with young girls uh, these days I, I feel so it was hard enough with me growing up. You know, I, I can't even imagine the way teenager, right. like young women have to be yeah. and how strong they have to be. And it's sad because if they don't fit into the pocket of what all the other girls in the school are doing, that makes them different. I but I want them to know different is okay. And that's the message that I just am passionate about us all telling our stories because the more we confidently and courageously tell our stories about those differences, we give permission for people. Yeah. I've, I've, when I do keynote speaking, I will put a picture of the mobile home, the trailer that mm. I grew up in that was on an acre of land on my grandfather's farm. And when you see me standing on stage, most people wouldn't make the connection that, oh, this girl grew up on a trailer in the middle of nowhere in Indiana. Proudly, I was yeah. loved. I, I was, that was a beautiful place to grow up, in, in my opinion. But we have this expectation of what we think people should and could be that I just want to take all of that conversation off the table and say, exactly what you said, yep. be you. Yep. Be all of the uniqueness of you. Be you. Yeah. And it all turns out okay. Just discover where you're supposed to be. Don't get freaked out about it. Find somebody to connect with that you can be inspired by that yep. will uh, let you authentically be you. Yep. And it all works out okay in the end. It does. I, I do want to point out one more thing. When I was growing up, um, in especially in middle school, in my class, I was actually the only white person in my class. No kidding. Mm-hmm. And so growing up where I grew up really taught me about diversity. Mm-hmm. And it taught me never to judge a book by its cover. And and I think that that's really important too because given the, the climates that we're in right yeah. now, it's sad because when I look at people – I don't, I truly do not see color. And I wish a lot of people did that. And the word diversity is an interesting one. And it's unfortunately gotten some stereotypes already attached to it. But I think diversity is as much about the differences in your heritage and, and, and color and all of those things as it is about how you move through the world. I think we've put labels on things yes. like if you're on time and you're organized, you must be smart. Yep. Well, no, there's nothing that says there's a correlation there. In fact, we in corporate America, especially in business, we dismiss people who are wildly creative sometimes that can solve really, really important problems for our business in our communities because they didn't show up for the meeting on time or that their, you know, their desks are messy, right? right? So we, we, we can't even be different in that regard because we have expectations that there's a certain way that people should be in order to be successful. Yeah. And that's not true. Yeah. At all. Yep. I would probably be fired from a lot of jobs because my desk is a mess and I'm always late. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Right? And and I've seen this so often that in business, I had a colleague who was amazing in front of clients, did some of the hardest consulting work that I've ever seen, and in the moment could just work with a CEO who was a complete challenge and just get them to understand things and get them to move their business forward. It was beautiful. He was terrible at following up on his email. His travel arrangements were always a mess. And the one conversation that would happen most often was people would say, well, you know, he never gets back with me on email on a timely basis. I'm like, bitch, please. Yep. Is that really the most important use of his time and talents is that you get your email answered on time? No. Let's Have we forgotten about the fact that he is amazing in front of clients, but we do, we put these expectations. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a part of diversity that needs to be talked about more often as well. Like let go of some of that and just let people be themselves and see what kind of gifts and talents are in there. That's, that's where the magic is. And I agree with that. And I think that what makes a, a true 
if you think about like companies in general, um, I'll, you know what? I'll take my real estate team. Okay. I am, I am the creative person. I am the, the, the energy. I am the, the person that, that needs to be in front of the people. Yeah. I'll tell you right now, don't give me a piece of paperwork. <laughs> I will well, lose for it. crying out loud, you've got dyslexia. Exactly. You get the numbers and the it's Thank all... you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but th- exactly. This is the thing. Once I understood what my weakness is, okay, I know I'm not good. I'm not good. This is not my strength. Why am I gonna try something that I'm not great at? Right. I need to hire somebody to balance me out. Amen. And it's, I could never work. I don't want to work with somebody like me. My clients probably wouldn't want to work, but like <laughs> one of me is enough, like we said before. But having a backbone like my Michelle, she is the she is the one that is behind the scenes organizing everything because that's what her gift is. Yeah. And she doesn't want to be work. in front of the clients no. showing the homes and doing the things. She wants to be analyzing all the numbers, making yep. sure that when you come to closing, everything yep. is exactly right. Making sure the emails get sent out on time. Exactly. <laughs> and it's using our, our complementary gifts and talents that are totally different. That's humanity. Mm-hmm. That's, that's where we come together and we see how we add value for each other. Absolutely. It's a beautiful thing. It it's is. a beautiful thing. We just need people to understand that in companies, not every employee has to be the same. Oh, you but as managers and leaders, because mm-hmm. this is a group that I used to work with for years and years, what makes their job easier is if m- more people are the same and do things the same. Because it's e- it's like the it's like the factory assembly line. But the more people are the same, the easier it is to manage. But then you lose all of the unique gifts and talent. Please. Absolutely. Then your result is the same. The same. If everything, if everybody on the team is the same, you are going to get, you're going to keep on getting the same stuff over and over and over again. Who wants to do that? And I Preach, girl. I'm, I'm like, with you. I'm okay. with you. Okay. I know I'm a little cray cray, <laughs> but I'm just saying like. That's what we love about you. <laughs> It's your little bit of cray cray that's got you where where you are today. So, okay, I I can't let this episode go on without coming back to the fact that you've got a show launching on Bravo TV. So, so let's, let's go back to the path from you are now doing stylist work. You're still in Boston. You're doing some stylist work and you've, you've had several career changes that have gotten you to where you are today. So, so you did take his advice and go into styling. I did. Um, I was a stylist and mostly for men and I had some women like wives that I would work with too. And I, he gave me, he, he was true to his word, gave me one client, one client turned into about 15 clients over six months. And um, I did and you're that for years. 17, 18 years old? Now, at this time, I am 20, I think 21. Still. And I, I was flying to New York. I was flying to Florida. And it was wonderful. Like, I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And then I was at a client's house um, and bringing him, I think I brought him every color in Timberland boots <laughs> that you could find. I, I Probably about 25 <laughs> pairs, okay? I had me some Timberland boots back in the day. I'm not going <laughs> to, yeah, it's all good. And um, I remember that he, uh, his friend was there, one of his teammates, and um Everybody would his this man's uh, him and his wife would always say, "Hey, you know my real name's Christina." Okay. Oh, so I didn't. Know a that. lot of people don't know that. So well, when, there we yeah, go. My, my real name's Christina, and so he'd be, say, "You know, Christina." Like it's a nickname. Nina's a nickname. Christina. Nina. It's a Greek thing. Um, anyway, so. He he was like, you should talk to my friend Clem. You should talk to Clem. I was like, oh no, he's not my type. No, I'm okay. And then um, Adrian and I just started like hanging out, and he became my friend. And then we ended up dating. Then we ended up getting married. And so that's how you got to Indianapolis. That's right? how I got to Indianapolis. Yes, <laughs> kicking and screaming. I yeah. was like, Indianapolis. What? Isn't it just farmland? Like that's literally what I was thinking. Yeah, there's some truth to that. <laughs> And I can't even imagine being in a, your early 20s in this fashion scene and and culture shock going from that to Indianapolis. And uh, yeah. don't get me wrong. I love my city. I love Indianapolis. And we've come a long way, baby. And I, it's a beautiful place to live. Yes. But I'm guessing in that moment you're thinking, what is happening? I, I'm thinking 
I guess I have to go because I'm legally required to go with yeah. him because we're married yeah. and I have now, I had one child at the time. Um, so I kind of didn't have a choice and, and I was, I, I'm a city girl. So definitely an East coast girl, New York, Boston. I just, I, they feel like home to me, you mm-hmm. know? So it was, it was hard okay. and, and talk about people changing you. Oh girl, I got another story for you. Okay. So <laughs> So when I got here, everybody would make fun of me. So here I go again. Now think about this, okay? <laughs> so think about like me growing up where I grew up. Okay, okay, didn't look like everybody. Like I was dyslexic, thought I was stupid. I come to Indiana and now everybody is making fun of my accent. But it wasn't that like make fun. It was like, oh my God, you talk so funny. Say that again. <laughs> oh, You were what? like the entertainment. I was the entertainment. <laughs> Okay, can I get any more insecure at this moment? (laughs) But you're leveraging into a TV career now, so let's not be hating on it now, right? That's that's the thing. And it's like, uh, what I started doing was, you know, people would kind of laugh and 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 think it's funny with my accent and I did start getting insecure about it. But what what's the turning point of this is I started, you know, okay, I'm just gonna. Pronounce oh, you my were words. gonna you were gonna try to talk like an Indianapolis I, I person. Was, yes, yes. Boring. But, but no, 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 Boring. no. I, okay, okay. <laughs> this turns into a good story okay. though because the same people that would say, "Oh my God, Tyler, that's so funny!" Like, and mind you, one of my friends, she's still my BFF to this day. But they would make fun of me. But then when I started talking, like you know, the more that you're here, the more you you just you know you kind of lose your accent. Yeah. So then I would go back home and I would come back and I would be like, oh, yeah, it's in the car. She'd be like, what? I'm like, the, I'm sorry, it's in the car. <laughs> <laughs> you could turn it so, on and turn, and turn it, it off. off. Oh, so now so it's actually like a big joke. And, and my, my uh, the Michael, who I do the show with, it's, it, it, it actually comes to be like, comedic because he I'll say something he'll be like I'm sorry what did you say what did you say and I'll be like I have an idea like okay I add ours a car I take a cars off I was like hey I'm from Boston what you want from me <laughs> so, so now it's kind of just like that's your and it's, it's fun thing. it's it's a fun person it's a fun energy that's what we love about it so, okay, so let's let's go back and connect the dots from, okay. before we I'm go sorry, to no no no, no 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 we love it we love it so unfortunately things didn't work out quite like you thought in the Indianapolis marriage yes, thing. Marriage wise, we don't yes. need to go into that. That's a whole different story. I, I You know what? I actually do. I okay, do, I do, do want to point this out because I think that this is important for, for some people to know is even if a marriage does not work and you have children, what is very important is that you, you learn how to be friends again mm-hmm. and you learn how to co-parent. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the kids are the most important thing. And even though I am not married to my ex-husband, I will tell you he is he's still he's still my friend. Mm-hmm. He's still my BFF. Like in and, and that is important. I feel like for everybody to know about me because not only my flipping house is with my ex-boyfriend, but you know, my my ex-husband and I are good friends. And once again, it just comes from a place understanding, okay, it didn't work out, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit back and dwell in my past. I'm gonna move forward. And that's one of the things we bonded over when we first met is same situation with with me and my ex-husband. We are good friends yep. and and do holidays with the kids and birthdays and talk often and it's it's so much better for our well-being yes. as well as the kids it's just a, a beautiful place to be but you're right you have to you have to let go of the past and move into the future in a new new relationship yeah. new expectations and i i will say this healthy happy parents are i believe equals healthy happy mm. kids mm. yeah that's beautiful that's yeah. beautiful and that's on us yeah it right? is on us that's on us it is absolutely on yeah. us yeah. So as you are moving into this new stage of life after after that marriage has ended, that's what got you into real estate, right? Okay. I got a story for you. Yes. Okay. That's why we're here. I'm like, okay, you might be like Nina Clem part one, Nina Clem part two. Like, this might, this might be a series from this episode. <laughs> I love it. That damn Nina Clem talks too much. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, this, this, is, this is a true story. I know that probably people are going to think I'm legit crazy after the story, but this is, this is the truth of what happened. Um, when I went through my divorce, I had no idea what I was going to do. 
I was a stay-at-home mom at this time now for almost five years. And I can't be a stylist. I'm in Indiana. Like, just like, really, is that well, something and, that- And you didn't know- an, uh, I didn't even know where to shop. I was only here for like six months. Yeah. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't know the area. So I didn't know what I was going to do. Do I go back home? Do I stay here? And it was really tough for me because I didn't want to bring my boys that I will tell you are black, white, Spanish, and Greek to to where I'm from as a mm. single mom. I didn't want to put them in that environment. Right. So it was a challenge for me. Like, what do I do, God? Like, literally, I was crying out. What do I do? Do I stay here? Do I go? What am I going to do for work? How am I going to support my kids? Like, this is a big deal. Yeah. And I, I promise you, I spent two days fasting and praying. Mm. And um, I will never forget this moment. I literally was laying in my bed and I was like, God, like, what? Like, what What do you want me to do? You know, how am I going to, mm. like, I got babies to take care of. And never in my wildest dreams would I ever consider going into real estate. I didn't even like houses. Like, <laughs> at the time I didn't. I was like, and I heard just, uh, I heard in my spirit going to real estate. And I was like, I don't even like real estate. Like, what are you talking like, about? <laughs> yeah. What, and I was like, mm, that must not be God. And then it really it really came to my spirit again. Mm. And I, I called um, I called a woman that had my house listed and who was not a believer, which is actually hilarious because I called her and, and I said, Heather, you're going to think I'm absolutely crazy, but I really just feel like I heard the voice of the Lord tell me that I should get into real estate. And she said, well, you know, I don't believe in God, but okay, that's cool. Here, call this person. <laughs> He'll use anybody. Yep. And and that's how I ended up getting into real estate. Oh I, my gosh, I love that story. And it's it's the truth. And and I would have never in my wildest dreams ever thought that I would go into real estate. It's And you were successful out of the gate. Yeah. Out of the gate. My <laughs> I got another story for you. <laughs> Yes, please. Okay. So remember how I told you I was a stylist back in Boston? Yeah. So I signed my contract with the FC Tucker Company. And I kid you not, true story, seven days later, a past client of mine from the New England Patriots called me and said, hey, girl, my wife and I are coming into town. We're thinking about moving to Indiana. Can you recommend a realtor for us? Stop. I like cried. I was like, oh my God, I got my real estate license. And he goes, how the hell are you going to go from dressing me to selling me real estate now? <laughs> oh my gosh. You've styled him and now I, you sold yes, them a house. He actually, I don't know if he still did, but like a couple years ago, he showed me a couple of the, of the, um, of his suits that I had made for him. So and and yeah, so he he actually uh, my first transaction was a two point two million dollar house. Oh my god! So if that wasn't God's confirmation that I'm doing what I should be doing, then I don't know what is. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. And then that career led you to this TV show, which is with your ex boyfriend. Correct. So you've taken this relationship theme through this episode to a whole new level. You you really have looked at relationships as a key part of your life and and it's playing out amazingly now it, with it, this too. It is. I, I actually have a joke with my team that um, I should start a new show that's called um, um, Building My Empire with My Exes. <laughs> There's a few of them that there's, are helping me. There's like. a few of them that are still rallied around you. I love that. That's yes. awesome. So tell us about the show. So you not only sell houses, mm -hmm. but you've been flipping houses. Yes. Yes. Um, I started when I when I first got into real estate, obviously, I was just focused on working with buyers and sellers. And then I kind of just got in a bug of, you know, mm -hmm. I, I want to try this flipping thing. I want to see, like, I want to take my creativities from dressing a person to actually being a stylist for a house. Okay. So pause on that because one of the themes that we talk about a lot is that your gifts and talents are, you discover them over time. It's like this breadcrumb trail is the way I describe it. So you, that is a perfect example of a breadcrumb trail. You're like, oh, I can dress people. I bet I can dress houses too. Exactly. Like that's beautiful. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Keep going. And that that is, I remember driving down in an area of Indianapolis that reminded me of my hometown. And the street was a hot mess. 
the street was a hot mess, but the foundation was beautiful in the houses. Mm -hmm. But exterior, it just it it was it was kind of like me. Mm -hmm. You know, it was broken. It needed some work. And I wanted to make that house beautiful again. You're going to be And cry. <laughs> that's, that's really why I got into flipping because mm -hmm. I do believe that it's taking something that lost its light mm -hmm. and giving it light again. And that's why I love flipping. It's not, yeah, it's great to make money and all that. That's wonderful. But for me, there's a different meaning. You know, imagine a, a first-time home buyer going into a house and the fixtures and the 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 way that it's designed is the same way a million dollar house is, yeah. but it's just on a smaller scale. I want to provide that to people. You know, I want to bring my unique fixtures. I, I consider my fixtures, my light fixtures, my faucets, my hardware, my accessories. Those are my accessories yeah. for my houses. And let me bring that house to light. Ugh. And one of the things you told me when we met is – you don't have a specific style that you're doing for each house. You let the house tell you yes, what it is. Exactly. Yeah. I think that that's important because it's we talk about people trying to change people. And why am I going to take a house that is a mid-century modern house that was built in that era and take away all its character mm -hmm. and make it something what that – society now says it needs to be a cookie cutter house. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. Mm, I love that. So it's unique gifts and talents for the the houses as well. Their history and their stories. They're, they are stories. Yeah. And I try to tell that with my flips, but it's hard sometimes because I overthink and I want to make sure that I keep the, the – how the house is like anything I can keep, I'll keep it. And if I can't keep it, it means I really couldn't keep it because right. Michael couldn't save it. So it's not right. that I didn't want to keep it; it's you couldn't. Right. And and I think that that's that's what I feel like sets me apart from most, you know, TV shows about homes. You know, they're about homes. Yeah, that they go in and they flip and and the houses are are their style. They're mm -hmm. that you know certain house flippers buy their house. With me, all mine are a little bit different. Yay. Oh, that's what I'm excited about. So your ex-boyfriend, his name is Michael. Correct. And I remember the story you said. Sometimes he's called <laughs> It all depends on. It, it actually all depends on if he's, if he's in line with what he's supposed to be doing or not. <laughs> but you. Can I swear? I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> we can bleep if we want, but we usually okay. don't. Um, you laugh about how you always have, you know, bickered and had a little bit of that kind of relationship. And that's what makes you fun on the air, right? I'm guessing. I, I, we're, we're, it's not, we don't, you don't come out with this. The August the 6th, 6th is the first episode. So that's what I'm seeing in the commercials and the that clips, right? August 6th at 10 p.m. We follow uh, Real Housewives of Orange County. Their premiere, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, big, big deal. Big that's deal. a, it's That's a, a pretty deal. cool slot, yeah, girlfriend. Nice. Woo woo. Thanks, Bravo. Love uh, you. <laughs> are we going to have a watch party here in Indianapolis? Like, oh, invite me, girl. <laughs> invite me. We'll see. We'll see. Yay. But um, yeah, so I, I, Michael, we have this chemistry that is, I feel like, no other. It's not, nothing is staged, it is truly authentic. Our our banter back and forth. Oh, see, here it goes. The banter accent again. I just can't, I, I can't, can't help even, it. I'm sorry. I can't even imitate it. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we just we we are who we are, and I don't I don't back down. And he, um, it, it's a very interesting dynamic, and I actually can't wait for people to to see the show because it, it there is nothing with our arguments or our dysfunction that is um, that is staged. It is all genuine. It is all like, oh my gosh, do they really talk to each other like that? Yeah, we do. Like, <laughs> And but yet there's still love and Absolutely. admiration and respect. Absolutely. Yeah. It, yes. And it's it's kind of like, you know, we, we might, you know, call each other out of name, but some people say, hey, babe, and that's how we talk to each other. But we know it's our endearing turn with yeah, each that's other. Yeah, that's your language. It is. Yeah. And, and I think as crazy as that sounds, well, I think a lot of things I'm saying sound absolutely bonkers today, but um, but that's, that's, I feel like, why we make a good team. Because we do, he is very good at walking in a house and being able to see what 
can be salvaged and what can't. Mm -hmm. And being able to look at the numbers and that that is his skill in finding houses. Like he's he's a he's a wholesaler, so he's mm -hmm. able to always find homes. But I feel like that's why we're we're a good team. He's able to find them and I'm able to create my vision and let it come to light. Oh, I cannot wait to see the show. Oh, I'm excited. Please everybody tune in. I'm looking I'm hopefully God willing season two, please. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well we will make sure we do our part to get the message out. But I just I just want to wrap up our episode by just thanking you for being all of you because that's that's beautiful and that's what I want our listeners to come away from this seeing you and saying here's here's a girl who grew up kind of in the hood yep. and she took her gifts and talents and now she has style and sass and she's letting God lead and yep. she's getting a TV show and she's doing this stuff like all of the uniqueness that you have is what makes you fabulous. You are awesome. And I'm going to cry. <laughs> Thank I know. You. Thank you for being you. Thank you for having me. I so appreciate it. And I wish you all the luck and blessings in the world. Thank you so much. And I'm not coming down. Isn't she great? Oh my gosh, please tune in to the show Flipping X's on Bravo TV. And your reflection questions for today are, number one, what unique gifts and talents do you need to use more of? And the second question is, who do you need to encourage to use their unique gifts and talents? And I want to give a huge Thank you to Nina, because in typical connection fashion, she reached out to Dee and Tammy Brown's daughter, Lexi, who is playing in the WNBA, and introduced me to Lexi, and she will be next on the podcast. So it's a great way to just model what we talked about today, which is passing it on and really encouraging other women. So thank you, Nina, for practicing what you preached. Make it a great day. I'm not coming down. I never left it on the ground. I'm not coming down.